1962, Toho pitted Godzilla against one of his most bizarre opponents ever, King Kong. The movie remained one of Godzilla's most obscure outings for decades until 2015, when Legendary Pictures, following the success of Gareth Edwards' Godzilla one year earlier, announced the next movie for their MonsterVerse would be Kong Skull Island, and that these movies would culminate in a grudge match to end all grudge matches. Now, in 2021, these two titans are stepping back into the ring to settle it once and for all. <laughs> Welcome back to Script or Screen. My name is Christopher Kitchen. Alongside me is Zach Strackman. Zach, how are you doing? Uh, I was doing pretty good until my entire city and about a hundred to five hundred thousand people that I knew were smashed in a giant monster battle. Imagine like being a news reporter out there in the day, like, oh my god, we're we're coming to you live from the streets. Oh my god, a building's about to fall on me. It's like Batman versus Superman in you know, the beginning be f- of the movie. <laughs> what if what if it was like you were out there to report on something totally mundane, and then it was like it's like uh, I'm out here talking to people about, you know, how th- the lines to get these COVID vaccines and then like suddenly a building behind you just drops. I, I, dude, that would suck. That would be super sad. Why don't we have a movie about that and less about the giant things that do that? You mm. know what I'm saying? What about the survivors? They're I don't important. know. That sounds a whole lot like... Uh... Who's going to pay for this? Who's going to sue Godzilla? <laughs> I'll you... see you in court, Godzilla. What like and now that I think about it, imagine like what do you what do you do like how did Zack Snyder expect to put Superman in a court of law and just well, like is, for that the thing to be a is, scene? Listen, listen, it's not that he put Superman in a court of law; it's that he put Superman in a court of law and then like didn't follow up with it. Like he <laughs> he, put, he put him in a court of law just to blow that court of law up because turns out Snyder doesn't care about actual like filmmaking things Your or Honor, story. My he, client, though a lizard, he's innocent. It was not his fault he became hey, nuclear. <laughs> hey, Chris. Hey, Chris, what are we talking about today? Zach, we are here discussing <laughs> the uh, the newly, the highly anticipated, uh, the newest box office success of uh, 2021, Godzilla vs. Kong. The, We're back, baby! The Big film Monk that saved giant cinema. Lizard. Yeah. Dude. Not Tenet. <laughs> not not Tenet. Brought to you by the same studio from Tenet, though. However. That's true. And 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 the film that uh the the number one streaming film uh in in the country, not uh, uh Zack Snyder Justice League. It's it's Kong. No Godzilla versus Kong. Arguably a better movie, though I, I can't really say much because I still haven't. I've yet to watch uh, Justice League: The Snyder Cut. Um, so, however, if I look at ratings, Kong versus Godzilla is rated higher on most uh, most of these sites. I, I will say, like you know, there uh, Justice League is definitely it's better than the theatrical version, but it's still. It, as someone who really just dislikes uh, what's his name Snyder's uh, whole aesthetic and the way he approaches films, uh, it was just it, it it was still just an agonizing thing to get through. Um, this yeah, though, here's the thing: it's it's like this is uh this is not a four hour movie. In fact, this <laughs> film is the opposite of that. This film is is what I'll tell you. It's the just under two hours. It's an hour and fifty three minutes. I would say it's pretty standard in your in your blockbuster. You know, yeah. I would, would you? This isn't a summer. It's like a spring blockbuster. I'd like to call it a summer one, but you know, when it was, was it meant to come out, to as, come out? As, as in winter or whatever. Was um, it? I don't remember. Um, but I'll tell you what. It was a weird experience seeing these giant titans uh, on the small screen at home um, versus in the big theater. I kind of wanted to see them in theater, but at the same time, you know. I pay for streaming. Uh, yeah. And I actually went to go buy tickets and I'm like, $20. Yeah, those, ain't, <laughs> those ain't pandemic prices, my friend. Those are, the world is getting back to normal. Yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> that's, uh, 
it's got to be the right movie for for right now. But um, actually, I, I'd like to make a follow up to that statement, Zach. Uh, I just got my first vaccine shot this week. Hell yeah! I am uh, I'm a part of the Pfizer gang. Um, Pfizer friends. We've been no, over this. Uh, you know, you know me. Um, no third <laughs> arms have grown. Uh, I can feel the 5G surfacing through my body and my veins. Heck yeah. I've um, gotten my second dose, so I am... Oh, yeah, you did, didn't you? I can walk into a room... I can walk and into infect a... infect co- everybody. Oh, God. <laughs> no. Even, even if you have your full vaccine, you still gotta wear a mask, so... That's, that is true. Um, but if I got my full vaccine, I could... I think I could kiss you on the mouth. And I think that would be okay. <laughs> I mean, I just have, from I, mean co- I just have to worry about, you know, like, where your mouth has been. <laughs> yeah. I, like, haven't been, like, eating shit or something. Anyway, Godzilla versus Kong. <laughs> Godzilla, dude, um, so let's let's do this real quick. I got a, I got a brief synopsis uh, brought to us by RottenTomatoes.com. Hit me. Um. Let's do this. Uh, Legends collide in Godzilla vs. Kong as these mythic adversaries meet in a spectacular battle for the ages with the fate of the world hanging in balance. Really? Uh, It's a little dramatic. I know. There's more. Kong and his protectors undertake a perilous journey to find his true home, and with them is Gia, a young orphan girl with whom he he has formed a unique and powerful bond. But they unexpectedly find themselves in the path of enraged Godzilla, of an enraged Godzilla. Um, Cutting a swath of destruction across the globe, the epic clash between the two titans instigated by unseen forces is only the beginning of the mystery that lies deep within the core of the Earth. Jesus Christ, this is a long synopsis. That's that's what I said. You just want to read the plot summary to me? I feel like it would have been shorter. Yeah, probably. Um, but that's it. That there you go, dude. So, um, let me ask you before we yep. before we dive too deep into this. Uh, what's your it. what is your opinion on this whole uh, uh, monster verse? Uh, it's over. Is it over? I don't think the that's... only thing they have left is, or at least that they've announced, is like the Netflix show. Uh, uh, yeah, it's like an called anime. Skull right? Island. I don't know what the hell it is. It is an anime series. It says right here. Um, but uh, as of right now, that is all the movies. Um, Listen, and so I'm not gonna. I, I'm not gonna complain. I I'm gonna say this in the the kindest way I can. You're a fool. You're a fool uh, if you think this is the end. Well, <laughs> here's the thing. Here's this the thing. movie. This movie performed. That that. All right. Listen. If there's one thing I know, it's that um, people, especially big studios and head honchos and, you know, marketing teams, they love money. They love, uh, and they love when they do well because they can pat themselves on the back saying, hey, more money. <laughs> um, that's corporate or uh, uh, executive meddling for you. Well, um, we'll get into executive meddling. But uh, overall, I'm not a fan of the term MonsterVerse. Then again, as I've said on the show in the past, I've never been a fan of any type of verses. Uh, you know, here's the thing. MCU is literally just titled MCU at this point. We don't have to say anything else. That's so simple. It's great. It uh, everybody else needs to copy that. Yeah. Everybody else needs to copy that format uh, in their own way well, if they can. Um, so I I don't know about you. I, I do like. So I I really like the 2014 uh, Gareth Edwards Godzilla. I, I like that as well. I thought it was really awesome. Um, I, I, actually, I liked, I'll tell you what. The art of most of these movies in terms of like the posters that they've produced. Uh, I have from every film except for Godzilla over uh, King of Monsters or mm-hmm. whatever it was called. Um, it's the one I don't have, but they, a lot of great art has come out of uh, these movies. Yeah. They're uh, Kong Skull Island. I've only seen like uh, one and a half times, but it, it was, was fine. I. Listen, was I'm a purist uh, for me. 2005 Godzilla is the quintessential Godzilla and no one can convince me otherwise. You mean, 2005 uh, King Peter Kong Jackson. is quick. Yeah, not Godzilla. Did I say Godzilla? You did. Oh, shit. You, <laughs> you don't know anything, you ignorant. Right. Sorry. Piece Horrible of person. Shit. Horrible person. Um, that being said, uh, King Kong, though. 2005 King Kong, I think it's pretty great. 
uh it's fine it's it's cool i they it could have been a lot worse uh considering they were messing with you know uh a property i really like godzilla king of the monsters i thought was really awesome except there's too many too. people too many people I and i don't care about the people <laughs> i don't know i feel like you know i know that movie i guess wasn't rated as well as this one that just came out Mm-hmm. But having watched it super recently, um, in fact, like the day before I watched uh, Godzilla vs. Kong, mm-hmm. I felt like uh, they gave me enough of both. Yeah, sure, they gave me a story about like some w- terrorist that also wasn't, but yeah, she kind of was. And she was responsible for all the bullshit that everybody had to go through in the death of about, millions uh, of people. Vera Farmiga? Yeah. Um, but at the same time... Um, Dude, uh, we got uh, Rodan, we got Mothra, uh, we got Ghidorah. Ghidorah. I am. Uh, I was pretty happy with all that. It was I, no. In fact, I was, that stuff I was, was great. Um, yeah. But listen, I gave Tenet shit for having a character, the main character called the protagonist, because I was like, mm-hmm. "Come on, you got to try harder than that." If the character yeah. actually matters, in I'll, this, I'll tell you what: the, the human characters don't matter in these movies because the whole reason you're going to see them is you're going to see Godzilla punch another monster in the face or faces. So that is true. So honestly, like Millie Bobby Brown could be called the protagonist, and I wouldn't care because it doesn't change the bottom line of why I'm going to see this film. Yeah. If it makes you feel better, this film is rated higher than Tenet. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't, According I don't doubt to, it. To, I, it, Hey, you want to, you want to know why? Because it's a good movie. <laughs> because it's, because it's well, it's well made. And there was no confusion on like what it was, what it was trying to be. I, I think when it comes to, some of these movies, whether it's like big monster movies or these high concept movies, uh, sometimes with like superhero stuff, where I feel I like I don't know. The, I feel like this is a very well, simple concept: giant monkey versus giant lizard. Right? No. Yes, it's a simple concept. But I think what I'm what, what I'm trying to say is, a lot of times with movies like this, where you have you know these larger than life, uh, kind of like <laughs> you know. You bastard! That was, you did that on purpose. No, um, <laughs> I feel the the attempt is to kind of rein in some of the sillier aspects because pe- yeah. I feel like the people behind it a lot of times, Ali, it, it's this is kind of being kind of edged out the the longer time goes on, um, and uh, the the people who grew up on this stuff are finally old enough to direct films um, mm-hmm. so they can pay them the respect that they deserve. But I feel like in the past, it's always been like, there's almost been like a level of like the, the uh, filmmakers who do, who work on them are almost ashamed of what they're working on. Yeah. And like, like Snyder, for example, and I'm going to keep referencing him because you know, it's a similar versus style thing. Snyder. I feel like when he makes his movies, his superhero films, uh, he, he strikes me as a person who is ashamed of what he's working on. He does. I, he strikes me as a person who doesn't like superheroes. He doesn't like superhero movies. And he's the reason they're so vastly different and, and divergent from what people have come to expect of those characters in those movies is because he doesn't want to embrace what makes those characters, those characters. He's not comfortable with it. Uh, now, if you look at, uh, it, I mean, would you say it's that, or the f- just that he wants to go against the grain, uh, I think, for the sake I think of just he, doing that, because well, I, I don't know if he's necessarily ashamed of what he's given. No. Yeah, he yeah. is because he's, he has openly mocked, uh, the concept of Batman in interviews and stuff. He doesn't, he doesn't find it, as as like you know, I as as far as I've been able to tell, he doesn't seem to hold it in such high reverence as say like Christopher Nolan, who really did those characters justice. But like you know, I I, I guess I agree with that. But let's I, look I don't at know. It's just I look at his emotion and just the way he when he does talk, it doesn't sound like it's shameful. I don't know, not shameful, but I think there is just a lack of like he doesn't he he doesn't really understand the that character that medium as well as he should we're not going to get into him uh much longer but i look at you know this the director of kong, uh, godzilla vs kong adam wingard he does not have the best track record 
He mm-hmm. directed uh, You're Next, which was really awesome. It was a really fun movie. The Guest, which was really good. The 20, what was it, 2016, uh, 20, yeah, 2016 Blair Witch, which was, as many people who pointed out, I didn't actually see it, but um, the the uh, from everyone I heard from and all the reviews I read, they said it was oh, extremely faithful to the original Blair Witch in terms of, like, um, style and and creepiness and and all of that, like he captured the essence of the original Blair Witch really well. Yeah. Um, and say you know, despite how it turned out, the uh, his his attempt at adapting Death Note uh, for Netflix, even though the movie is hot garbage, I don't know, I enjoyed s- it. Yeah, but you haven't seen the anime, so you don't you don't have the proper way it should be <laughs> but to compare here's the it thing to. that i i don't agree with that well maybe, do i even need that though to be able to enjoy a movie? no no i'm just saying the only reason you think it's good is because you haven't seen the actual as, as death an note from somebody and if you, outside if of you the, the if you thing. saw the actual death note you would think that the live action american death note is hot garbage but that's okay because we're not gonna get into death note right now but but i i will say at the very least that's not a. F- it was close enough in spirit to the Death Note uh, series, where even though it wasn't a good film, in my opinion, it still captured that same kind of like. You know the the well, see, I, I want to say it captured the same spirit. It didn't necessarily capture the same spirit, but it followed a similar trajectory. And I can say at the very least, I can tell Adam Wingard you know, watched Death Note and just tried to put his own spin on it in a way that was still uh, reverent to the source material. And I feel like with Godzilla vs. Kong, when I'm watching it, I can tell Mm -hmm. that Adam Wingard definitely wanted to, you know, do this story with a level of respect that, that I feel like other filmmakers would not be willing to do. So, you know, what's interesting is that I, I, Looking back at some of these at these movies, right? Like there's there's what four films? It's Godzilla, Kong Skull Island, Godzilla yeah. King of Monsters, and then this one that just came out. There have been kind of different like creative faces for each of the films, right? 2014's Godzilla was Gareth Edwards, uh, right. also known for Rogue One, and then nothing else since after that. Um, <laughs> Kong Skull Island uh, was Jordan uh, Vogue Roberts. Am I saying that right? Boy, uh, Boy Roberts. Um, <laughs> Vogt Roberts. Vogt Roberts. I don't. Yeah. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly. And then we that have guy. Michael Daudry uh, for Godzilla vs King of Monsters. Um, and then you know we have Adam Wingard for uh, this one that just came out. However, you look at the producing team; it's the same same people: Thomas Tull, uh, Mary Parent, Alex Garcia, and I think it, um, there's there's a couple: uh, John uh, Jasini. Jasini. Mm-hmm. I, I I could be butchering his name, but like it, it seems like. It wasn't necessarily the face of these of these uh, of these movies, like you know the the, the head honcho, the director that that maybe uh, all the credit should be given to. I feel like maybe this producing team they were just trying to find somebody that really like you know they had their ideas, they know what the studio wanted, they really just need somebody like all right, we just need you to execute. So maybe this just means that uh, Adam Wingard is is. Uh, he, maybe he wasn't always given great material, but maybe he works great with producers or or just studios as well, which isn't a bad quality. In fact, I think uh, you know if you can get, get that you know and have that um, kind of skill mm-hmm. on a film, especially something as big as this, um, that could also make it exciting um, because you know he didn't write this; uh, it was written by Eric Pearson and Max Borenstein. Right, um, right. You know, so I just feel like. Uh, uh, but regardless, sometimes... you know, his past work, I, I don't feel like maybe it's not very reflective to this film versus this film. It's like it's, it, it'll be a great addition to his filmography to help balance him out. Yeah, definitely. And I think, you know, he might have been the right person f- uh, for this type of job. He might have. I can tell that when, you know, as this movie's going on with how how the fight scenes are are directed and how the story plays out, I can tell that everyone that worked on this creatively, uh, you know, they, they didn't just say, okay, we have Kong and we have Godzilla and we're just going to mash them against each other. 
uh, yeah. un, un, you know, for, for two hours and stuff. The, the, the fights are actually, like, easy to follow and well choreographed. And on top of that, they play very, very surprising homage to the original Godzilla vs. Kong in 1962, which, if you haven't seen, is an absurdly silly movie. It is it is insanely silly to the yeah. point of just, like, you can't even take it seriously. Yeah. It's but, just, I, well, it, but it was fact, just a fun time. Yeah, but the, but the fact that they were able to rework some elements of that movie into this in ways that worked, uh, I thought were really great. Um... But uh, here's here's a cool thing: is the budget of this was between uh, 155 to 200 million, and as of today, it has uh, a box office return of uh, 285.8 million dollars. Well, that's great, and yeah. I mean, I I don't know in terms of uh, how many more subscriptions HBO Max got because of this movie, because you know, yeah, right? Who knows what that or how many you and I were continued. talking about this. How many continued uh, subscriptions? Or, yeah, they, they were able to maintain in a month just because the SVOD world uh, is really uh, just, it, it boggles my mind every day as I let you know. What is it? <laughs> I, I was posting on Instagram, like, uh, Netflix it's, had it's... purchased uh, the Knives Out sequels for, like, $400 million, and it's like, oh, well, they make $1.875 billion a month every month <laughs> since quarter four of 2020, and... I just I don't know anymore. I don't understand. I'm super happy that they're making money though. So that's that's why I'm pretty sure. Listen, the 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 uh just outpouring of of excitement from uh, you know all corners of the internet uh when this movie was dropping, like people mm-hmm. were like crazy hyped for this film. Like I don't think yeah. there was an there was a corner of the internet I could go to where people weren't posting memes about Godzilla and Kong or people weren't yeah. like, I got my ticket or I got, I have my HBO set up and, and you know, like everyone That's was true. talking about this movie. And I, I think, uh, you know, Warner brothers or legendary, whoever, when they, uh, you know, when all the dust settles, um, I think they're gonna, I think they're gonna they're gonna see this this uh, enthusiasm that's there, and they're gonna be like, "Yeah, we we have an audience for this. There, the people yeah. want to see these characters." Uh, so we're dead. Whoa, whoa, I- whoa, whoa! These creatures, not these characters. These well, creatures, well, these well, beings, these titans. Well, we'll also, we'll get additionally, to that. Additionally, I I just want to add. Um, after a brief search, Godzilla vs Kong, as of right now, is the her the, the third highest grossing film of all time in 2021. Nice. I say of all time. I, I just mean in 2021. <laughs> of all um, time this year. <laughs> uh, it, it is behind two other films that were uh, distributed in the Chinese markets. Uh, it actually says it's sitting at like 300 million right now. Sweet. So, yeah, I would say that's uh, it's pretty for, awesome. For pandemic numbers, that's pretty good. Yeah, um, I. this is amazing. I'm so how about really this? Let's, this? Let's look at this entire cast that doesn't matter. Um, honestly, <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, okay, so we have Alexander Skarsgård as character one. Mm-hmm. He's, he's Dr. Nathan Lind. He d- deals with it's, Hollow Earth. It doesn't matter. It's all, it's just plot. Are we getting to, sto- <laughs> uh, are we doing like spoiler mode, non-spoiler yeah. mode? Or a- uh, spoilers from here on out. Uh, three, two, one, spoilers. Okay, here we go. Millie Bobby Brown as Madison Russell. Who cares? Oh, there you go. Rebecca Hall as Dr. Eileen Andrews. Can I say something? They mentioned yeah. some. They're like, oh, they they there's a a magazine like uh, cover, and it's it calls her the the Kong Whisperer, and yeah. I'm like, but like throughout the movie, like Kong does not give a shit about her. Yeah, it's really Gia. Yeah, uh, then and that's Kaylee Hoddle who played Gia, Jaya, whatever her name was. Cool thing I just I found out and in and do, in doing my research. Uh, she is deaf. So, all the signing is legit. Yep, like I said, my favorite film of the past year was uh, *Sound of Metal*, and that uh, they they hired a lot of uh, hearing impaired actors for that. So I yeah. like seeing that uh, that inclusivity. There you go. Brian Tyree Henry as Bernie Hayes, uh, the only character that I feel was justified being here. Yeah, because he was funny at the very least. 
Julian Dennison as Josh uh, Valentine. Uh, Julian Dennison, I, I like him. Hunt for the Wilder People. Uh, uh, Deadpool, Deadpool 2. Yeah. Uh, so he's, you know, he's a funny kid. Uh, Damien Bashir. Ooh, cool. you mean Bob? Yeah, Bob the Mexican. Uh, as Walter Simmons, I don't know why they didn't call him, like, Alistair Apex. Cause... I know, that would have been fantastic. Imagine if they did, you and I would have had a field day with that. Zach I and I have it. an ongoing joke about any rich person from any company just has the first name Alistair. Um, Followed so by, the, use by, that. by the company name. Yeah. Uh, Shun Oguri as Ren Serizawa. We'll get back to him, because there's some frustrating stuff with his character yeah. and uh isaac gonzalez as maya simmons maya apex <laughs> and, maya uh, alistair apex there's a lot simmons. of other people in this movie that that honestly don't matter um what about kyle chandler yeah god so kyle chandler was like heavily advertised for this movie and he's in two scenes Kind of reminds me of, like, Brian Cranston in the very first Godzilla. Yeah, I'm going to skip ahead a little bit, because, uh, cause, so yeah, there are uh, a lot of characters that were either f- uh, cast in the film and, and had scenes that were cut, or were yeah. cast in the film and just didn't film stuff. So, yeah. obviously, Kyle Chandler, he's in, like, two scenes. He didn't need to be here. He's literally just in this, just to have an argument with Millie Bobby Brown, who play- who's his daughter, it was, and not, then, it was not the greatest thing. And then Lance Reddick, awesome actor that Lance Reddick is, shows up for one scene at the end. Can I tell you something? I don't even remember him yeah, in, he, the, in the movie. He's he's like there at the very end. He's just like, I am here. I am doing something about Godzilla. And then like he's like gone. And it's like, cool. But like, did, did, that, did that mean anything? Especially because he's not in the other... Monsterverse movies. Did you recognize uh, comedian Ronnie Chang? Ronnie Chang. He was uh he was the uh, the guy in the store who was like uh, at, if she yes I yes think she has, she used the phone. I'm like oh my god they just like threw him in here like so randomly, you know? Yeah. And I said that like what? Uh, I don't know. I thought he's a he's a funny guy. They could have used him more. Um, and but, not uh, just like cast him as a whatever character. Yeah, and then there was uh, Zhang Ziyi, uh, who she had a role in Godzilla, uh, Godzilla King of the Monsters. She was the scientist who was studying Mothra, and then later as also her twin sister, because that was a good that was a good reference to the Mothra twins of the old Toho films. And uh, she apparently was cast in this film. I think she might have even filmed scenes, and that she was just they didn't put her in the movie. Maybe yeah. because Mothra wasn't in the movie, but maybe Mothra was supposed to be. I don't Did, know. Didn't Mothra die? Maybe. I t- like, weren't Mothra's Listen. wings on fire and, like, Mothra burned up? What sucks is Mothra was one of the best parts about King of Monsters. Death death and, means uh, nothing in these movies, though. Godzilla dies in the original Godzilla film, so, like... <laughs> Yeah. Mothra, Mothra could have laid some eggs and we get baby Mothra. But then um, also... Or we could just bomb uh, Hollow Earth and just try to reignite Mothra's life force or something like true. that. That's yeah, true. If we if we put the, the matrix of leadership or whatever in Mothra's chest. Oh, Jesus. And then... Uh, but also Jessica Henwick, who is... Uh, she was in Game of Thrones. She was in Iron Fist and a bunch of other stuff. Uh, awesome actor. Uh, also, cast in the movie just didn't show up. I don't know what's up with that, but I feel like they could have maybe added stuff that I feel like some of the other characters didn't add stuff. And they probably could have been left out. Like Question Kyle is, Chandler. who played Godzilla this time? Was it Andy Serkis? <laughs> I don't think not Andy's... Not... Yeah, I mean, King Kong, excuse me. <laughs> no, he only did Kong for uh, the 2005 Kong. Because he's Peter Jackson's best buddy. Yeah, they're they're friends. Yeah, but um, but yeah. So like, overall, like the actors in this are it's fine. It's like, like Damien Bashir, he plays uh, the role fine because he all he's supposed to be is the smarmy businessman who, who he he does a good antagonist. He does. Um, I think he's better in the Wild West, uh, with a mustache and a gun, <laughs> and you know, but. It was all right. It was fun seeing him here because I don't think I've seen him in anything since Hateful Eight. Um, but that's about it. Also, um, 
Are we still on characters? Can I can we, can I just bring this up already? Mm-hmm. Yes. Um. This this uh, Ren Sirizawa like. He yeah. was related to Ken Watanabe's character? What? So, I'm reading so yeah. this for the first time ever. Right. So, um uh, what was his name in in uh uh I- Ishiro Serizawa from uh the 2014 uh Godzilla and its sequel, Godzilla King of Monsters. Right, right. You know, he's obviously the let them fight. And that's, you know, He's also and, Ra's al Ghul, or the phony Ra's al Ghul in Batman Begins. Well, yeah, but and he even was a reference to Daisuke Serizawa from the original Godzilla, who creates the uh, the Oxygen Destroyer, which is the weapon that kills Godzilla. Mm. Um, and it was, you know, as as you learn in the continuity of this monster verse, uh, Ishiro Serizawa, he he was definitely on the side of, like, mankind shouldn't try to control nature, just let them be, let them fight and stuff. And by the end of King of the Monsters, he sacrifices his life to awaken Godzilla to defeat Ghidorah. Can I tell you something? Yeah. Uh, Before I had seen Godzilla King of Monsters and I was just Googling um, Godzilla vs. Kong... I was mm-hmm. like, I wonder why Ken Watanabe is not in Godzilla vs. Kong. What happened to him? And then <laughs> I watched King of Monsters and I'm like, oh. Yeah, because he, he <laughs> kind of got, it. He got nuked. Yeah. So then, yeah, uh, with this one, you get um, you get uh, Shun Guri, who is Ren Serizawa, and he's like, he's the son of Ishiro. You wouldn't know it if you just watched the movie because not once do they ever mention, I don't think they ever say his name. Yeah, I don't, I don't. I don't know what happened. You know, he was in the trailer and he had that cool moment, um, but in reality, it's like, what did he do in this movie outside of being like a Jaeger pilot? You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, he, he shows or a up. Kaiju at, pilot. He shows up at the beginning in um, in Skarsgård's apartment. Yeah. Um, and he, he's like, "Oh, we're gonna go to Hollow Earth," and then he's, he said, "I'd like to talk to you about the Monster Initiative." <laughs> right. <laughs> And then, and then, yeah, then he's he's Jaeger piloting, piloting uh, Mechagodzilla before being electrocuted to death. Yeah, what which, a fucking... but he wasn't he also controlling regular Godzilla too? No, the whole idea was that Godzilla. So Godzilla is the the great equalizer. He's oh, the God. he if nature gets too. I'm, I'm learning here live in front of everybody. God, at least in in the extent of this series, Godzilla is like he keeps everything in line. So if nature gets too crazy, like in um, King of the Monsters, uh, he shows up and kills all the monsters that are bad. And then he goes and he, he, you know, Godzilla, if left to his own device, is just going to stay in the ocean. Um, He's he's on vacation in LA. Godzilla (laughs) Godzilla could sense that Apex was making something that wasn't good for the world. It wasn't kosher. He could sense Mecha Godzilla. And probably because of the bones of Ghidorah. <laughs> I oh, don't know. God. Like explaining it is so stupid, but it's so great because it's like obviously like there's an audience for it. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I but, mean, uh, just in, in on paper, this movie does not make sense. In actuality, just it's cool. In general, no, I feel like they got away with all this because it's cool. Let me tell you, when I you look at that trailer, the trailer was cool as shit. Yeah, when we saw like God. They were having the the water fight and everything, and then the way he went to the city, and then there's like the Kong's got an axe, like that's just like badass. Yeah, they the marketing for this was really good. Um, but man, talk about a wasted character. Like, could you imagine for a minute? I think there's a few moment, a uh, few things we pointed out in our notes of like things that could have acted as a really cool way to build a strong human narrative because the human narrative in this movie does not matter uh both sides are just there to to push everyone into hong kong for the final fight i I was going to say like i the way i wrote it for myself was like uh they're just they're the cutscenes in mortal combat where (laughs) you know we're, we're just getting to the next stage uh for these guys it's we're at the water stage okay next stage is city right uh, the one right. after that is is uh hollow earth hollow earth um yeah so yeah so for for this like 
come on, could you imagine if like they built a narrative around like Ren Serizawa? He's he you know his father died because of Godzilla, and maybe he never found out why, or maybe he just resents Godzilla because his his father was taken from him before he but you know uh you you could have too they early probably could have eliminated the the Demian Bashir's character and just made it him you know yeah maybe and, and just but I mean I don't know it's but it's little, like the role's cliche but it's, but like it's, I don't know that he could have been such a cool tragic villain of like you yeah. know I'm doing this because this whole thing is like oh we're doing this to protect the planet uh because Godzilla is bad for the planet but also they created a giant monster that destroys things so it's like I don't know how good for the planet that is whereas like if it was Oh, I'm Ren Serizawa, and I created Mecha Godzilla specifically to kill Godzilla because I hate Godzilla because he killed. You know, that's he took the reason. My daddy. Yeah, that's the reason my dad died and stuff. Um, yeah. Then you go like, okay, hey, is it perfect? No, but it's relatable at the very yeah. least, and I can get behind it. Yeah. Um, and then on the flip side, I think we both talked about how he's like, also an established actor. I don't know if you looked at his filmography, but he's been a lot of things in like the Asian markets. Mm-hmm. So it's not like he's uh, just some whatever actor. Like he is uh, is is supposedly this great presence on screen too. Yeah, and it's it's another missed opportunity. Oh, he uh... um, to us to Americans. Yeah, I want nice. I want to say this is probably like has a very large uh, American audience given the fact and and even uh, oh wait is he no is he the uh, he's the live action uh, Gintoki from Gintama. Uh, that's funny. Um, there you go, Zach. But, uh, yeah, listen, I think he was wasted here. He could have been so much cooler. But let's talk about some of the things that, that we did like in this film. Namely, Godzilla and Kong. Because I think they did a really good job of wherever they could, and to the to the extent that they could, imbuing them with a bit of character. Not to um, say... Not to say that these char- they were like reciting like Shakespearean soliloquies or anything, but like <laughs> uh, I'll tell you what I just love like the beginning the beginning of the movie where it's just like Kong's routine. Oh yeah, he gets you up, know, he like scratches his up. ass, and yeah, you know he's just doing his thing. And I'm like, dude, like this is great. However, it did immediately give me slight indication that this was going to be more of his movie than Godzilla's because why else wouldn't it be? I think. They realized, oh, we really only gave Kong like two hours of screen time in the last movie or um, in his own versus Godzilla's has two other ones plus this. Like, right, right. So I should have expected for them to play kind of roles. That's like maybe the one thing I wish that they not that they didn't do, but like that they did. If they were to do it less, that would have been cool. But, you know, I'm not going to complain with what I got. I, I think, you know. Part of it was like, you know, the movie was built around the mystery of why is Godzilla destroying things when that's not yeah. something he normally does. Yeah. Um, when. But it's like they spent this whole time like building him up as like this awesome guy and or like he's well, like this hero, so to speak. I mean, like he's not a hero by any sense of the world. He but was like, always meant to be kind of like, like I said, he, he keeps everything in line. So like. I guess. Dude, this, this, this poor bitch. Kong ain't even out of line. He's just trying to go home. Well, it's because they're ancient enemies. Didn't you listen? They're ancient yeah, I enemies. Yeah, listen. But what the f*** is this guy? You haven't seen him in, in generations. I want and... him to pop out of the water and be like, Kong, you son of a bitch. <laughs> but, but, I mean, like, all right, let's... You want to talk about that first fight? Let's... Because I got some things to say about Dude, that first fight. It was pretty rad. It was uh, one. All right. Round one. Water stage. Fight. You know, like, fight. <laughs> Gotta say, uh, for someone that's not used to being in water, Kong used the shit out of those boats, jumping like, Listen. you know, some frog or shit, like, going left and right. And um, I, I want to say, he did not win, but he did his best. I So, I gotta say, for a, for a movie about giant monsters fighting each other... You think maybe tension's not a thing that that not not something that can get played with, but when Kong's chained up and like he's like being pulled underwater and the boat flips and stuff, and you're just kind of like, oh my god, like get get Kong out. Yeah. Like part of me was like, how's he gonna how's he gonna escape? And uh, but when he does escape, listen, listen, I'm, they let his ass go when he was when about to drown when. 
when this movie is evoking evoking imagery from fucking Neon Genesis Evangelion with Kong standing on an aircraft carrier as Godzilla is moving in on him. I'm like, you've already won, movie. You've already won. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you what, um, and here's a logical question that I have. Mm-hmm. How the f*** they sedate him? Uh, How many, I think they said... Like, I like think they said what? they have like a, or I don't know if they said, but I I do remember uh, I I I watched this one with uh, the Godzilla vs Kong with my family, and I remember we 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 made a joke about it. Where it's like they have like an ambient button, and they're just like slamming the button. Oh God! Like what? How are they going to do that to this guy? Like how do they get him trapped into the dome and to be a little bitch and you know just kind of hang out? And I'm like, how how? They can't even get Godzilla to sit still for two seconds. They can get Giant Monkey. And then, you know, then this is where I, I, I came to think, you know, realize. Uh, Godzilla, he's all, like, brawn and evolution. And, mm-hmm. You know, versus Kong, is he's a, he's a man of brains, of, of thought, you know, intelligence. He could talk. He could speak, communicate. He knows sign language. That was awesome. That was a great reveal. I loved that. All because Coco... The gorilla knew sign language, so now every movie gorilla knows sign language. That is true. Rest in peace, Coco. I think she like passed away like a year ago or something like that. I'm I'm almost a hundred percent sure she. It was just like in the last two years she did. Uh, 2018. Ah, uh, so sad. Rest in peace, baby girl. She was like, <laughs> you know how old she was? She was like in her forties. Something like that, but uh, but yeah, seeing uh, you know the whole part where 46. it's like raining and stuff and. Kong, like, you know, he signs, like, we're home. Need, yeah. Need banana. <laughs> the whole part where they where they get all the fish, and he, like, you know, like, take, you know, eats a bunch of fish while he's on the, yeah. the boat. That was pretty good. Um, it was. Also, just the, the imagery of Kong in giant metal shackles being carried by boat. That's, that's, that's a tough. very, well, that is a very famous image of King Kong going back that to the nineteen thirties, you know, of yeah. of him being taken off Skull Island in chains. Yeah, you know, I I, I mean you I re you rewatch the um the Peter Jackson one and like he's in the cage on the stage and it's like, oh that that just breaks my heart. Yeah, I um, mean I listen, I, I love those movies. I don't know, like I know there's like someone like Tarantino who who he believes that the whole story of King Kong was meant to be uh, was was it intended as a a reference to uh the the I guess the co- colonizers of the of back in the day uh taking uh slaves uh coming to America with slaves I don't know if I necessarily buy that reading of it but uh. But I can definitely see where the the imagery lends itself to that kind of thinking, but yeah, um, but yeah, I, definitely round one for this movie. Uh, it, it goes to Godzilla. Yeah, dude, uh, they all most of the rounds between <laughs> him and him go to Godzilla. I said this from weeks ago, months ago when we saw the trailer for this movie. I said, guys, who do you think is going to win, Giant Monkey or Big Lizard? And you guys were all against me. Say we have a group chat, ladies yes. and gentlemen, um, and. You guys were against me. And I said, how in the world do you think this giant monkey is going to beat this nuclear, uh, fire-breathing, uh, explosion plasma-blasting lizard? I, I have no idea. And y'all were dead wrong. I was fucking right. However, I'll tell you what. When he grabbed the battle axe from Hollow Earth, Hollow Earth that had, like, it uses the scale or whatever you want, like, the dorsal fin. It looked, yeah, like a uh, of, But it also... Like it also looked if, like it if, might have been metal or something. I don't know. No, no, no. If you if you go and read the uh, the the Wikipedia or the the whatever story article, it says that it's supposed to be like a prehistoric uh, Godzilla. Like what is it called? Fin. Yeah, it's not. No, they used a they used a word here. Um, uh, oh, I'm on the back, wrong uh, back Wikipedia spike. page. It's it's called it's called. Ba, 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 ba. Uh, come back to me. I am uh, inside Hollow Earth ecosystem. They discover the ancestral throne room where they find the remains of an ancient war with Godzilla's kind and a glowing axe made from another Godzilla's dorsal plates. Okay, it is called dorsal. Um, 
That was cool, um, though, a throne room. I mean, I yeah, guess. Yeah, except when I was seeing it, I was like, who the f*** built this? <laughs> <laughs> like, that, is, like, that is true. <laughs> were there people in the hollow earth? I don't know. Yeah. I realize, again, nitpicking is not what you're supposed to do with these movies. Like, it's, No, it's, not at all. But anyway, it was, uh, it was, yeah, the first fight was really rad. Um, let's see, what else did I think was really great in this? Um, I, I really like that, um, when, you know, when they fight, it's, like I said before, it's not just Kong hits Godzilla, Godzilla hits Kong back and forth. Like, there is a creativity to the fight. The one thing I think is the biggest the crime ever. Is beauty. Yeah, I think the one thing is the worst you can see in these verses, you know, movies is a lack of creativity. For example, uh, to throw him under the bus again, I don't know what the hell Zack Snyder was thinking when he did Batman v Superman. Because yeah, can we just say this is this movie is essentially Batman versus Superman? Kind uh, of. Kind Almost. of, yeah. yeah. It's 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 Warner Brothers' way of getting it right. Because <laughs> listen, he has Batman and Superman get into a fight with each other, but like the whole point is like they don't want to fight, and not once does Superman just fly away and say like I'm okay, I'm not gonna fight you. I I literally don't have to. But like in in Godzilla vs Kong, it's like obviously they don't they're animals, so they're not going to just back off from each other, you know. But in in Batman v Superman, they they exchange like like Batman has a few gadgets up his sleeve, and then the rest of the fight is just them punching each other. And it's like it's if Batman and Superman fighting, and the best you can come up with is they punch each other. I don't know what about grenades. No, uh, no, lasers. and that's just it's again you're talking about like small moments within the larger fight. When mainly the fight is he hits him with the kryptonite and then punches him and then kicks him yeah. and then punches him. And then Superman... Yeah, I'll, t- I'll tell you what, this. I think that this fight, Godzilla vs. Kong, kind of lends itself to also using the terrain that they have around them. Exactly, as it's part creative. of like their advantage, advantages. Yeah. Um, like, come on, like you said, when they're in the ocean, he's doing Frogger, he's jumping ship to ship, Godzilla is, is like, dragging him deep underwater to the point that he can't breathe and stuff, there's, like, yeah. you know. Vis- visually, everything is just, is incredibly stunning, uh, the fights are visceral at times. Getting just, to see, uh, getting to see, like, uh, again, it's something that I we've seen in, like, the 2005 Kong and stuff, and, and. I think in Kong Skull Island, but I love the fact that because he's a gorilla, he can make use of all of his limbs. So they go into the water and he like kicks Godzilla in the face and stuff. Yeah. Oh, he got knees too that they bend, and Godzilla's just like <laughs> Godzilla's like I'm too dummy thick to bend my knees. Exactly. Um, but uh, but yeah, I mean, better. it's you know then. I liked the Hollow Earth stuff. I don't know about you. I thought it was cool. It was a nice way to pay homage to, I feel like, maybe some of the movies that of, of olden days that maybe their adventure stories and stuff inspired Listen, this journey to the, the center thing, of the though, Earth. This movie is not an adventure movie, which pisses me off. Because you know what? I liked... Uh, so I read Journey to, the, Journey to the Center of the Earth when uh, like long time ago. Okay. Um, and I loved it. Um so I, if that were the case, I would have appreciated like uh, a Jules Verne reference or something, at least a name, name drop or something. Um, but they weren't going to do that because they're dumb and, uh, <laughs> you know, whatever. Uh, anyways, um, I yeah, it was cool. Wait, um, there was a, you wrote another bit that I thought was kind of along the same lines. I'm just trying to find it. I don't know. It's, um, maybe. Uh, Maybe not. Maybe I'm an idiot. Um, oh, um, actually, I, I have one. Um, this is just kind of funny. Another bit that they did was they dug a literal hole to China. That was incredibly uh, dumb. That was... Uh... And and they dug a hole from Florida to China and never... From Pensacola pa- of all places. And they never passed through Hollow Earth. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, how? 
How does that make any sense? It's, it's I don't know, but who cares? They, they, they were only on the inner mantle, Zach. They didn't want to go through the... It, uh, <laughs> the crust it does it it's so dumb but it's like again like all it is is just to facilitate all the characters ending up in one place and then like you know like i said none of the story matters it's just excuses to have godzilla and kong fight let's just skip to round two So, uh, so round two here we go remember Kong is pissed he lost the first round he got his throne destroyed and he's like i'm not taking it anymore Bingo. He grabbed his uh his new weaponry and he sought out uh vengeance uh and got his ass handed to him again. But and let this me time, tell you something. That there, bitch almost there, died. There's some fun stuff in this in this second fight, because now that it's like on like you know, even terms kind of Godzilla yeah. doesn't have the home field advantage. That is uh, true. Seeing seeing Godzilla or uh, Kong like jumping off buildings and stuff was really cool. Seeing uh, Kong trying to avoid Godzilla's atomic breath and then, like Godzilla tagging him in the back with it and when God, uh, Kong falls down Godzilla like laughs at him yeah. and you're just like, you're like oh that's cool like I like that they're like you know there's an expressiveness to the fight and listen never in my life did I think we would ever reach a point when like so there's this really stupid moment in the original Godzilla vs. Kong when um, G- uh, Kong pulls a tree out of the ground and he jams it in Godzilla's mouth and it's just a silly scene and Godzilla's like, ah, what are you doing? And like backs off. Yeah. And in this, like Godzilla's like loading up his atomic breath and G- uh, Kong takes the the handle of his axe and he jams it down Godzilla's throat. I'm um, like, they actually worked it in? <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. I was like that that just shows that they're paying attention and they they you know, they they uh, want to reference these things even if it's silly, you know. I'll I, tell you what though. They they were really lacking. This was the fight that they needed to have a Martha scene and they didn't even care to save Mothra. You know, I that was the one thing I was hoping that they'd have because it was the one thing I really liked about Batman vs. Superman. <laughs> No, um, I, I I hate that scene. Uh, I think it's uh, incredibly stupid. Um, you know, all right. I'll tell you what. Uh, I was right though, because again, Godzilla fucking won the yes. fight. The, the direct fight of Godzilla versus Kong. Godzilla won. Hands Can down. I he say two, he two stocked him? He two yeah. stocked him. <laughs> like Smash Brothers, but yeah. um, I love that the end of the their fight uh, as it's like. You know, they, they, they scrap for a little while, and then I love that the fight just gets dirty. Like, they both, like, end up, like, kind of, like, like dragging on the ground. Godzilla is, like, is like biting at Kong's feet, and Kong kicks him in the face, and then Godzilla's, like, scratching into his chest, and Kong yeah. punches Godzilla's wound and stuff. And you're yeah. just like, oh, these, they're, like, you know, it's it's a gnarly fight by the end. And then, it yeah, was It was literally to the death. Um, and Godzilla finally he just steps on him and he's just like say you quit. <laughs> yeah, it, it it was unfortunate, but I'll tell you what the 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 everything that followed was I guess even more awesome than what we just saw in a way. Um, we get our surprise guest of you know our surprise secret round fighter, uh, which really wasn't much of a surprise when you were watching the film. And also um, leading up to the film because man, I'll, I'll I'll tell you what this is my biggest complaint. <laughs> Nothing about the movie because the trailers I feel like hit this in a way that was fine. It's just the dissection on the internet that annoyed me. They're like, all right, if we get it, we get it. But if we don't, you know, whatever. But um, also, the companies, you know, co- the marketing companies people. like Pop Funko, where they're like, check out all these Pop Funkos of, from Godzilla vs. Movie. Kong. Yeah. And look, here's the Mecha Godzilla one. And you're like, oh, okay, that, well. That was, if, yeah, I think that's when you and I, you sent us, you're like, well, I guess there's really no filter on these guys. I, you know, what's um, even the point of trying anymore? Uh, but you know what? No, they still respected it in every trailer since they dropped. They didn't actually put him in. And you know what? I got to say, like, I have a lot of respect for the studio. F- these other companies, they should get sued. Um, but when they, they when they delivered Mechagodzilla, they f***ing delivered, dude. He was yeah, he awesome was cool. from beginning to end. 
uh, and he served every purpose he needed to. He didn't. And he didn't really badass. look like traditional Mecha Godzilla. No, but I mean, they, I'm going to give them as much leeway with it as possible. You know, this is a I new think, interpretation. Yeah, it was fine. It was like you know. Plus, they destroyed in, in fact, him. So. I don't know if I wanted him to look exactly like he looked in the original. No, I want him to. He needs to look like a giant metal dinosaur. Um, but, but uh, he, he was super badass. Um, you uh. Well, I say he, it, it's a thing. Um, it was just really cool. And I thought the way they worked in like the, the Ghidorah, like skull, like as the station center control for, yeah. um, for his like controlling was also badass. It was pretty cool. And then like, he's just basically like an AI gone yeah. crazy. And I like, I like the stuff where it's like, he launches himself into the air with a, with a like rocket boosters and he hits Kong and, or he hits Godzilla and, like uh, his his tail shoots a beam. Listen, never in my life did I think we would ever see a modern day film where Godzilla and Mecha Godzilla have a beam struggle, a live action beam struggle. That's so. Yeah. That is a sentence. It, it was it was awesome. I loved is, every little bit of it. Is really great, and then of course, yeah, like uh, Godzilla gets his ass kicked kong gets i guess uh he, dude, he gets uh de- defibrillated right, and back to life and then he, he jumps gets his in moment to shine and you know? then yeah he gets to kick uh mecca's ass i love the part where he gets up after he's been part. defibrillated and he yeah. like slams in the building to pop his shoulder back into place oh god that was like <laughs> It's like, such a great moment. Then it's like, okay, I'm ready. And yeah. come on, Godzilla and Kong double teaming Mecha Godzilla through a fucking building like pro wrestling match. Yeah, it was pretty badass. They each grab if, one if of his arms. If there was ever a WrestleMania event to watch, it would have been this movie. And then again, I feel like this is something that a lot of these, uh, you know, like Justice League or Batman v Superman really misses out on. Um, and I feel like the, the Avengers movies are really good about it. Um, this movie delivered. They did a combo attack. The Godzilla fired his his uh, atomic breath into Kong's axe to supercharge it, so that way he yeah. could cut through Mecha Godzilla. Dude, I'm like, it was like, a oh, bad ass. It's great. It's wonderful. And then and then afterward, I like that Kong. He just has to he just has to sit down. He's like, I need a vacation. And luckily he got it, you know, not far after. At least, actually, um, I'll talk about it in a moment. But, like, uh, it, it was kind of where they left off. They're like, all right, uh, we see you. We see each other. Uh, I guess we're equals, so to speak. You help me with my guy, and I won't kick your ass again. You know, right. we're even. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah, no, it was definitely like, yeah, they both just, you know, like, I'll leave you alone, you leave me alone. And then... Godzilla basically did the Homer Simpson backing up into the bush. <laughs> <laughs> He's just like, I'm leaving now, bye. And everyone's yeah. like, okay, I guess we'll all, all you know, 500,000 of us will just sit here dying. Yeah. Oh, my God. Imagine That's what I'm saying. Like, how is it that five years after the events of Godzilla, versus King, of Mon- Godzilla King of Monsters, mm-hmm. how is it there are still coastal cities? Did at the end of that movie, like, they unleashed every... Uh, kaiju monster that there ever was, like, ever existed? Well, they have, uh, they, you know, if you look at a movie like Pacific Rim, it's like, it is kind of like that direct uh, response to the existence of kaijus. You know, they started trying to build walls, and then they built the Jaegers to to deal with the the kaiju, but... um, It's... I think with this, it's like, at the very least... Godzilla normally doesn't destroy cities, at least this version of Godzilla. Yeah, um, but he, he just um, lets everybody else do it. <laughs> well, he he comes in and stops them when they when they get uh, out of control, I guess. But listen, we got we got Godzilla now, or Mecha Godzilla, and we got Kong. I want to see my my biggest complaint about like these uh monsterverse movies is that they invent all these unnecessary titans like in the um in king of the monsters movie oh king of monsters king of monsters was cool because they they featured 
Mothra Rodan and, and Rodan and Ghidorah. Yeah. It was cool. It's like, okay, you got like these big four famous I monsters. I don't know about you, but like Ghidorah is probably like the, the most famous for me. Like he was like, you know, yeah. Ghidorah's king. See, for me, I, I have always been a big fan of the Toho movies. And I loved when I was a kid playing uh, uh, Godzilla Destroy All Monsters. Mm-hmm. So I, I like, I would love to see a movie where they bring in like Gigan or Anguirus or destroy you know like these other like really famous uh toho monsters that that have all have really cool designs and Geras was the first monster that godzilla ever fought in these movies in godzilla raids again so i I'm just googling some to look at them what which oh kamanga is the uh the crab that one <laughs> cool. um, um but like would be awesome you know, like as long as they're done well, I, I will always go and see these movies. I I think I've said this before. I have I think kaiju's and like just giant monsters in general are my weakness. Cause yeah. uh, like like Rampage came out a few years ago with um, The Rock. I have a buddy that worked on that movie. That movie was not that great, but I really liked it, and the action was done really well. Yeah. Um, I mean, listen, would you be opposed to uh, an, a, an additional Pacific Rim film? May I offer you that at least? Well, I, I, got, an I, addition- like- I got an additional Pacific Rim film, and it was kind of garbage, so... You, yeah, it was all right. I, I would have um, preferred a Guillermo del Toro, you know, Maelstorm, that one that he wrote but they didn't go with. Uh, but we didn't get that. M- Maelstrom. Uh, Maels- Ma- was Maelstorm. Maelstorm. I don't know. It's, just ra- it's raining men. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's not what I meant. You know what I meant. You got me. You get me. Um, you know, w- w- I mean, we'll see what the future holds because as of right now, they haven't announced anything. Like this was what they built up to. Um, yeah. Like I said, I would have preferred at least one more Kong movie, and then we would have done this one uh, to kind of even the odds. And also, you know, after two films of us, you know, sympathizing with Godzilla, and now we're we're against him from the start of this one to being King Kong's best friend. And translators, um, mm-hmm. you know, I, uh, I, I'm happy with what we got. I'm not I, I would love to see a modern adaptation of Destroy All Monsters, because uh, I just I would love to see. There's so many cool monsters. I do want to see uh, a modern day Angaris. I do want to see like a Biolante or something. Uh, but you know, d- Mecha King Ghidorah. Like, come on, it's it's all there. It's perfect. Do you want do you want another mecha villain? Would that just not be another rehash of what we just got? Quiet. <laughs> well, that's why I want Destroya, because <laughs> Destroya comes from space. Oh, that would be cool. Um, yeah, having aliens come in and stuff. That's what about that's... Monster X? Monster X. Which one is Monster X? I don't know. It looks badass. I'm looking at a list right now of all the monsters. I don't. I'm not. I don't remember, but. Monster X is Kaiser Ghidorah. I don't know. I don't know what any of this means, man. I I literally know the big guys. I know the big guns: Godzilla, Mothra, Rodan, King Ghidorah, um, Mecha Godzilla. That's pretty much it. So they so used all my knowledge. To our and... audience, yeah. <laughs> to our audience, I will give you two suggestions. Number one, go dust off one of your old systems and play Godzilla: uh, Destroy All Monsters. It's a very fun game. And it's a very fun way to get to know some of these monsters because they're awesome. My other suggestion to you is, uh, oh, what year did the movie come out? If you like this stuff, I can't recommend it highly enough. 2016's Shin Godzilla. Uh, oh, the yeah. Japanese this, that film was highly rated. Directed by uh, Hideaki Anno of... Neon Genesis Evangelion fame and Shinji Higuchi and it is my favorite modern adaptation of Godzilla because it was meant to be uh, evocative of the uh, the Fukushima nuclear plant disaster and uh, it is such a fantastic monster film it is uh, an absolutely hilarious satire of uh japanese like bureaucratic uh 
bullshit. And it does what I feel like a lot of movies, uh, a lot of these movies fail to do. It makes Godzilla scary. That's awesome. So uh, that if that that is what I will leave you guys with, uh, you know, as the last thing from me for this podcast, go play uh, Destroy All Monsters and go watch Shin Godzilla. Um, also, watch uh, any other watch Peter Jackson's King Kong. Oh, a hundred percent. You know. Maybe we'll do an episode on that. That would be a. I feel like that'd be a really good episode. That would be a great uh, episode. But let us know what you think, Zach. Oh, you know what we forgot to do? We forgot to plug all of our social media and crap. Go <laughs> on our our social media crap. Our our Instagrams. Our listen, s- listen. We're bad. We're bad podcasts. No, we're all right. We're good. Actually, I got a text today that really warmed my heart. That's saying it was from a buddy. It said, "Hey, uh, gotta say, listen to the Minari episode," and gave me his thoughts on it. And he said, it's not often I get to uh, text the host of a podcast I listen to and say, you did a good job, but uh, there you go. And I'm like, oh, that makes me feel good. So thanks, Richard. Um, Anyways, please follow at Scripter Screen on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Visit our website, www.scripterscreen.com or anchor.fm forward slash Scripter Screen. There you can find all of our past episodes and all of our future episodes and subscribe to us on all your favorite listening platforms. We're on everything. I want at this point, I would be surprised if we're not in a listening platform that I haven't checked because it just seems like every week, uh, you know, whatever is new, we just get on automatically. Um, that, uh, that dude, I think that's that. This was a fantastic film. Uh, let us know what you think about Godzilla versus Kong. Did you like it? Did you hate it? Who do you um, want Godzilla to fight next? Why is who it Angiris? Why is it Angiris? There you go. Why is it uh, King Kong's brother, uh, Jeremy Kong? Uh, uh, and uh, I guess, yeah, that's that's about it. Um, I have been, I have been, I have been Z- Zach Kong. I, and I have been Christopher Godrius Zillathy. Wow. Please, uh, Enjoy the rest of Scripture Screen and our music. Thank you, Billy, for the edit. And uh, have yourselves a wonderful morning, afternoon, and evening. Bye.